Hello, my name is George Cairns, and in this video lesson, I'm going to show you how to enhance a scene by replacing a bland sky with some sunset clouds that we're going to create from scratch in Photoshop. And the tools we're going to use are selection tools to get rid of unwanted skies. We're going to create our clouds from scratch using Photoshop's filters, and we're going to modify those filtered layers to create depth, perspective, and even give them a 3D volumetric look. We're also going to use adjustment layers to tint the clouds, and we're going to use layer masks to help blend the clouds with other components in the scene. So kick off by opening a suitable start image, such as this one here, one that you want to enhance with lovely sunset clouds. Before creating and adding the clouds, I'm just going to get rid of this bland looking sky. And to do that, I'm going to grab the magic wand tool by clicking here. I'm going to make sure tolerance is set to around 32 to get a nice range of similar blue pixels. And it's always worth ticking contiguous to stop it selecting other bits of blue that are hiding within the building, because we don't want to make the building transparent, just the sky. Then we can click to sample the sky like so, and you can see the marching ants are selecting some of the blue sky there, but there's some slightly different pixels here that are slightly lighter than the original sample. So if I hold down the shift key, it changes to a little plus icon. I can then click to add more pixels from the sky to the selection. That looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is just go to select and choose inverse. And now it's selecting the building instead of the sky. I'm going to turn that into a layer mask by double clicking on the background thumbnail here to unlock it. Click OK. And then we can click this add layer mask icon at the bottom here. And then we get a nice black and white mask. The black bits hide the sky, but the white bits keep the building nice and solid. We can then create clouds and pop them on a layer behind this layer. And we'll see the clouds and the building at the same time. So to create a cloud layer, what I'm going to do is click here to create a new transparent layer. That's going to appear at the top. Don't worry, we can place that below the building later. And then let's make sure that we've got a black and white foreground and background color here by pressing D for the default colors. Now let's pop up to filter, go to render and choose clouds. And that will mix the white and the black foreground and background color together to create a fractal pattern like this, which looks a little bit like clouds, but we've got a lot of work to do to make them look realistic. It's always worth giving your grayscale cloud layer a little bit of a contrast boost. If you go up to image and go to auto contrast, that makes the blacks a little bit blacker and the whites a little bit whiter, and that will help the clouds look more realistic later on. But at the moment, they're looking rather flat. So we need to create a sense of perspective. And to do that, first of all, I'm going to click on the zoom tool, choose the zoom out version, and then click a few times to see the edge of the frame like so. Make sure the cloud layer is still selected in the layers panel by clicking on it if need be, and then go to edit, transform, and choose perspective. Then you'll get these little corner handles around the image. If you click and drag one of the top ones there, the top left or the top right, you can then create a more realistic looking perspective for your clouds. Hit return to apply the change. And now they look closer in the foreground and more distant in the background. Go back to the zoom in option here and then just click to make it fit the frame. Or you can right click and choose fit on screen. And there's our perspective clouds. Now to give these clouds a little bit of a 3D volumetric look, we're going to go to filter and go to liquify. You might need to use the zoom tool to zoom in a little bit to see this central area here. I'm just going to click like so. And then I'm going to grab this tool here, which is called the bloat tool. So click to select that. And then you can adjust the size depending on your source image. This is rather large here. So I'm going to just scale it down to something a little bit smaller. You can use the left square bracket key to change the size as well. And then when you click with the bloat tool there, very subtly you can see it's just bulging outwards to create a more volumetric look for my clouds. Try not to go too far over the top, otherwise it does start to stretch and smear and look a little bit computer generated. So just a few clicks there should help to create that effect. You might want to turn a mesh on, you can do that here, and you can change the size of the mesh to suit your source image. So something like that. It's quite subtle, but it just creates a slightly more realistic looking clouds. When you're finished, click OK to apply the distortion to your cloud layer. OK, now we're going to use a layer mask to make this cloud layer semi-transparent. So click to target the cloud layer first of all, then go up to Select, choose Select All, then go to Edit and choose Copy to copy the clouds into your computer's clipboard. 
Now we're going to go down to the bottom of the Layers panel and click here to add a layer mask to our cloud layer. To paste our clouds into the layer mask, first of all, we need to hold down the Alt key or the Option key and click on the white layer mask like so to see it. And then we can choose Edit and Paste to paste the clouds into the layer mask. So we're seeing the layer mask at the moment, but if we click back on the main layer, then you can see that the blacker parts of the mask are poking holes in the layer and the lighter parts of the mask are enabling the clouds to remain more solid. So you get a nice range there of solid, semi-transparent and totally transparent pixels that just helps blend the clouds with the photo. So let's go to the cloud layer and drag that behind the photo layer like so in the layers panel. And then let's pop to the foreground color swatch at the left here, click, and let's choose a nice blue sky color, such as this lighter blue here. That will do. Click OK. Click the arrow icon to swap the colors around. And now click again. Let's choose a darker blue like this one here. Click OK. And now we're going to create a new transparent layer by clicking on the Create New Layer icon. Drag that below the cloud layer. And then let's make sure we've got the gradient tool selected by clicking here. We can then click the gradient picker to make sure that we've got our foreground to background gradient selected, which should be the default, but let's just click OK to make sure that's the case. And also we want to choose a linear gradient, which is this option up here. You can now click and drag from the top down to the bottom to draw a linear gradient, and that creates a darker sky at the top to a lighter sky at the bottom. And that helps the clouds stand out more effectively. Now you can see my marching ant selection around the edge there. We don't need that anymore. So let's press Command or Control and D to deselect that. Now these clouds aren't looking particularly sunsetty yet because we want to add some colors to them. So let's click on the cloud layer like so and then pop down to the bottom of the layers panel and click on this Create New Adjustment Layer icon. And the one we're after is the Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer. So click to select that. Up pops this Properties window and what we want to do is click Colorize, and that is colorizing all the layers below the adjustment layer, including the blue background. Now to make the adjustment layer only adjust the cloud layer, just hold down the Alt key and move between the two layers and you'll see this little icon appears with a little arrow there. Click, and what that does is it clips the adjustment layer to the cloud layer below, but it won't affect the sky layer underneath. So we can now drag the hue slider to the left there to change the kind of adjustment. And you can see it's tinting the clouds a lovely pinky sunset color like so. And I can boost the saturation as well to create more vibrant colors. So what we've got there is an adjustment layer that's clipped to our cloud layer and it's colorizing that cloud layer using the hue setting that we've chosen here. Click to close that. Now you'll notice we've got some grayscale clouds there that haven't really been tinted and they might look a little bit dirty and you might just want to clean things up a little bit. So what you could do is click on the cloud layer like so and experiment with different blending modes. So I'm going to go from normal down to lighten and that gets rid of the more grayscale clouds and just leaves the more colorful, lighter, fluffier clouds like so. And that is how you add sunset clouds from scratch to enhance a landscape. And you've now got all the skills you need to add other cloud layers like I've just done here by repeating the steps that I've shown you. Here's my cloud layer. I can turn that on and off. And I've reduced its opacity to 62% to make it more subtle. And I've also colorized it with a hue saturation adjustment layer that's clipped just to this particular cloud layer. So you can add as many clouds as you like.